Greetings of the day everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Ms. Sarika Zoshi, Assistant Professor at AISSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. In today's session, we are going to talk about barriers to effective communication. In my previous videos, we have seen the process and the types of communication. The objectives for today's session are going to be to understand why communication fails and to identify the different barriers which arise during the process of communication. Let's first understand what do you mean by a barrier to communication? A barrier is anything that prevents a message from being understood by the receiver as it is intended by the sender. As for any kind of communication to be successful, it's very essential that sender and the receiver attribute the same meaning to the message. But all acts of communication are not perfect at time, it causes a barrier to the communication process. The classification of barriers to communication is broadly based on sender-oriented barriers, receiver-oriented barriers, or sometimes channel-oriented barriers. As we have seen in the earlier videos that the communication process involves sender, receiver, and a channel to send the message, the barriers could be related to any of these three. The list of different types of barriers is mentioned here. First is physical or environmental barriers. Next is physiological or biological barriers. Third one is semantic or language barriers. The next one is personal barriers followed by is emotional or per perceptional barriers. We also have socio-psychological barriers, cultural barriers, and organizational barriers. We are going to see all of these in detail one by one in the upcoming slides. Let's first have a look at physical or environmental barriers. Basically, physical and environmental barriers are associated with the environment surrounding. Often, we attribute the term noise to use or refer to the physical barrier in general. Noise is the first major barrier. However, the noise can be a noise of a traffic sound or for that matter, a poor signal while taking over a cell phone. Sometimes it's also a disturbance which is around us that we call as a noise and this is very commonly found. The next one is distance and time which is covered under an environmental or a physical barrier. Distance and time may obstruct the flow of communication but thanks to today's technology that we have kind of overcome this barrier. Time barriers or time related barriers may also be associated with the difference in the time of the two different countries or for the people who are working in two different ships. The next one is wrong choice of medium. Imagine that the medium which is used for the communication is not suitable for the context. Let me give you an example. We are using complicated charts or maybe graphs to explain a simple concept of animals to tiny toddlers. Will they understand it? No, they won't and it will definitely act as a barrier to communication. The next one is our surrounding. Surrounding will also include the kind of weather conditions that we are currently into. Too hot or too cold kind of weather conditions may affect the emotional state of the person's mood or the person's mood and it will hamper the capacity to communicate effectively. So these are typical physical or environmental barriers. Let's now have a look at physiological or biological barriers. These are related to person's health and fitness. They may arise because of the disabilities that may uh, that may the, the person may have it. For example, poor eyesight, deafness, uncontrolled body movements, or sometimes even stammering. 
improper functions of the body parts may include the improper functioning of vocal organs to produce maybe a sound or a speech sometimes even hand or fingers are not working properly and may cause an uneasiness during communication ears for that matter which take in the spoken words or which are important for communication or even eyes which are needed to absorb the written words all these barriers are associated to the person's physic and hence called as physiological barriers the next in line is a very important one which is semantic or language related barriers again for those who are following different types of languages they will be easily associated with these type of barriers let's see them one by one the first is misinterpretation of word now what does that mean it means that sometimes uh, the semantic problems arise because of the gap between the meaning as intended by the sender and that as understood by the receiver let me quote an example here for example a sender is using a word yellow which is a primary color or which also stands for a freshness however the receiver in that particular context is taking it as its adjective which is depending on that particular context here both are associating different meaning to that one particular word use of technical words technical language which is mostly used by professionals in their work is in the same field is also called as jargon i'm sure all of you have seen the legal contracts or even a doctor's prescription it's very difficult for a common layman to understand those technical words i have personally come across this example wherein a person says in computer jargon to burn a cd which actually means copying a data on a cd however in literal literal meaning burn or to burn may have a very different meaning ambiguity you can see the adjacent image here ambiguity arises when the sender and the receiver of the message attribute different meaning to the same word or even a same symbol and convey different meanings to it and that's when confusion arises which leads to barrier of communication the next in line is a very common associated as personal barrier of communication there are certain barriers that are directly linked to the people who are involved in the communication so the people involved as a sender and the receiver personal barriers have to do with the age education interest attitude or even the needs and intention of the people as you all know there could be a difference in each of these parameters of a sender and a receiver a gap may exist and so the understanding may be different from sender to receiver leading to barriers of communication emotional or perceptional barriers now what are emotional or perceptional barriers let's see that personal barriers arise from the motives and the attitude of a person which individual has a different from another person perceptional barriers on the other hand have an added dimension which includes the sentiments and emotions as a human being we go through different sentiments and different emotions throughout our life and these emotions or these sentiments or even our motives and attitude has a different bearing on the communication too much aggression or passivity may cause communication barrier so extreme conditions like euphoria somebody who is too happy or too excited or for that matter somebody who is too angry or somebody who is depressed or in a stressful condition is not in a position either to speak effectively or to listen effectively and may cause a perceptual or an emotional barrier the next is socio psychological barrier these are also considered as one of the offshoots 
of your personal barriers and we do come across them very regularly. First one to mention under the socio-psychological barrier is the status consciousness. As you can see in the adjoining figure, it says, I'm the boss. So, if one's position is hampering the communication, say, between a subordinate and a boss, it will lead to anxiety, fear, and also to barrier or obstacle or obstruct the way that he is speaking to his boss or a colleague. The next is difference in perception. Now, this is one of my favorite images. Look at the image. Both people have different perception about this image. From one person's angle, the letter is 9 or the number is 9 and from the other person, it is 6. And in both the context, they are right. So sometimes the different meaning is given to the same symbol or maybe a letter or maybe a word and difference in perception may will lead to some kind of a difference in understanding and a barrier to communication. Prejudice. Now, what does that mean? It means that people with deeply prejudice are very difficult to communicate with each other. They have a closed mind and then they tend to react accordingly, thus ruling out all possibilities of communication. They are unreceptive to open and not open to any kind of ideas or any kind of person whom they do not like or dislike. So here you can very well make it out from this image. Halo effect or an horn effect. Yes, the term is very interesting. Sometimes the listener may be too much in awe of, that means he personally likes someone or he may completely dislike someone. In both the cases and in many a times in case of an interview or an interviewing situation, it does happen that you already have some perception about a person and you accordingly judge him or her. This may lead to certain kind of disruption in your communication process. Information too much or overloaded also cannot be grasped by everyone. What we listen or what we hear, we can retain only about 5 to 10 percent of it. So too much of information may wipe out the actual points of communication and may lead to a barrier. Cultural barriers. Now culture is the totality of socially transmitted behavioral patterns, the beliefs, the institutions and all other products of human work and thought. It is based on customs, rituals and beliefs which are followed in different parts of the world in a different manner. It also based on different nationalities, ethnicity, race and religion. A very common example which can be quoted here is a way that we greet each other. Isn't it different? Or the, peop or the way people celebrate festivals or many people have different meanings to different or the same color. So black in some community is used for morning and morning or in some cases it is also used as a different symbol status. So different cultural cultures or different kind of languages also at times may cause barrier. Now it's not only related to language but it's also related to beliefs that people carry along with them and the values that they are associated with their religion when they are communicating with each other. Isn't it interesting? There are people of different culture in an organization which could be working together and at times they may get different meanings from the behavior of the people. The last one quote here is an organizational barrier. How an organizational barrier is occurring is all because of the goal conflict that means the objective of a person and for that of an organization may not go in the same line. Sometimes the organizational policies are very rigid and they are not friendly 
or they are not very clear which may cause a confusion in the minds of the people working in that organization hierarchical structure too many levels in the organization say a top level a middle level and a lower level the messages get filtered and a wrong communication or a misleading message at times is passed which leads to obstacle between the different people working in the same organization so with this we have seen eight different types of barriers which may obstruct the way the message is communicated anywhere in the world now we have come to an end of this session to become a successful communicator one must overcome these barriers of communication the references that i have used for this have been mentioned here which i have used for images and the content so i would like to thank you so much for watching this video and to help you further with the kind of definitions or the terms that i have used in this particular peer presentation i have given a small video link in the youtube description box it's my humble request to you that you should attempt to that quiz link and you will gain more insight in different types of barriers till i come up with my next video goodbye and you take good care of yourself